Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make ugali which is a commonly known type of meal across Africa. In East Africa we call it ugali or sima. I believe the South Africans call it pap and the Malawians call it nsima. The only difference between ours and theirs is just the texture. Some people make it uh, softer and I like to say we the East Africans like to mold ours eventually like a cake. And and some countries just scoop it uh, with a big spoon and serve it. So that's the difference. Now let's get started with this ugali recipe. So what you'll need to make your ugali is maize flour, a wooden spoon which we call muiko and water. So make sure that your water is boiling and what I mean boiled hot boiling water as you can see here do not make your ugali in warm water or water that is not boiled because it will not cook well so make sure that your water has boiled like i've shown you and then add your maize meal bits by bits now um if you are doing it for your first time i'd suggest you do it bits by bits as you mix the flour with the water so since I have cooked ugali countless of times, I can just eyeball my uh, maize flour and I do not have to add them bit by bit. So what we want is to cook the maize flour uh, together with the water as you can see and ensure that there are no lumps uh, in your maize meal. So as you can see, it's sort of like kneading uh, a dough but it's using a wooden spoon so the more you cook ugali the better you will be with cooking it so you'll be doing it faster and faster but if you're doing it for starters do not um, worry about it so as you can see i have covered my ugali for about two minutes this is important to let it bake and allow it to cook even on the inside through the heat so um maybe many people who eat ugali will let you know that there's a particular uh, aroma of the ugali especially when it's well cooked you can literally smell the aroma of it so how you can achieve that is letting the ugali bake for a few minutes and this is also uh, a way for making you be sure as well that your ugali will cook really well so as you can see i'm covering it up for the second time and baked it a little and continue just cooking your ugali ensuring that there's no lumps so all you have to do is just push it and then roll it so it's just kneading it's more like kneading So just continue with the same process for about five minutes and you can always uh, take the extra uh, ugali of your muiko just from the sides of your pot or sufuria and you will notice right now as I cook it I'm also creating a shape or a cake like shape for it because it's pretty much done so people like their ugalis uh, in different textures some make it too soft some make it hard I do not like hard ugali and it's important that you don't make uh, or put too much flour if your ugali is hard then it will crack uh, sometimes people cook ugali and you realize that it has split in the middle that's because they put too much flour into it so I usually put um, enough flour I don't want it to be too hard and too soft because still the water evaporates as you cook so as you can see it might look a little bit softer but this is how I like it So you can see it's creating the shape and I'll continue molding it 
when I've served it on my plate. So you bring the plate next to the sufuria and turn it. And as you can see, the bottom side of the ugali was already uh, shaped well. So take your muiko or your wooden spoon and just continue shaping it up. Sometimes you can wet your muiko, especially if you put too much flour and your ugali is a bit harder. So when your ugali is slightly softer, it's very, very easy to mold it into your desired shape. And there you can see it coming together really well. And it's done. You can serve it with some skuma wiki or um, meat stew or chicken stew, which is my favorite. And enjoy it. Well, I hope you did love this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe as well to my channel. If you haven't, I will see you on my next one. Bye bye.